Good morning, everybody. Um, this is a continuation of our conversation that began last week, um, looking at racial disparities. Um, last week, we discussed more screening and diagnosis, and this week, we're going to focus more on treatment. As compared to white women, Black women are less likely to be diagnosed with breast cancer. However, um, if they do get diagnosed, they are more likely to be diagnosed at a later stage, including with de novo metastatic disease. They are more likely to have the more aggressive HER2 positive and TMBC subtypes, and they are more likely to experience delays in both asymptomatic and symptomatic patients to get to their diagnosis. And most devastatingly, they are more likely to die from their cancer. So let's talk a bit about racial disparities in surgical management. So we know that the surgeon and hospital where patients receive their surgical care is important. And while here at UFC, we're fortunate enough to provide high quality care. Um, nationally, this is a significant source of disparities. Um, the first study up top kind of used uh, SEER, the SEER database from 1992 to 2002 to look at where women went for local therapy. And they defined a high quality hospital as a hospital in the top quartile of patients who receive radiation after their partial mastectomy and a high volume hospital as a hospital in the top quartile for uh, the number of breast surgeries performed. And black women were significantly less likely to receive definitive local therapy um, including adjuvant radiation, and thus uh, and receive their care at either a high quality or a high volume hospital. Um, in the bottom study, the study looked at the distance traveled for Hispanic and white patients in California to get their surgical care and noted that Hispanic patients had to travel a greater distance to get to an NCI designated cancer center. This was a study conducted at hospitals in Washington, D.C. and in Detroit with large African-American populations and found significant differences in the time between diagnosis and surgery um, between black and white patients. In this study, black women were like less likely to have a college education and were more likely to have more medical comorbidities. They also reported a greater perception of discrimination, an increased level of medical mistrust, and a decreased level of trust in their providers. Um, the median time to surgery for white patients was 31 days, but unfortunately was 47 in black patients. Um, in a local study conducted at Loyola, they examined the role of racial disparities in women getting mastectomies. They know that there are biological differences in, at the time of diagnosis, which we discussed last week, including more advanced tumor, which may require mastectomy in a greater proportion of patients. They also know other social determinants of health, including lower socioeconomic status, patient preferences, ultimately leading to an increased number of mastectomies. In this study, which uh, was a clinical review, um, as well as interviews with patients who received surgery um, in 2005 to 2009, they found that 40% of patients overall had mastectomies, and factors that significantly were associated with an increased rate of mastectomy included Black and Hispanic race or ethnicity, a younger age, a diagnosis, low, uh, lower socioeconomic status, a lack of recent or lack of adherence to screening mammography, and a higher tumor pathologic stage in grade. There are also disparities in the incidence of lymphedema after surgeries. This study looked at the SEER database in cases from 2002 to 2007 and looked at patterns of either axillary lymph node dissection or sentinel lymph node biopsy um, all over the country. They found that over this time period, while the use of sentinel lymph node biopsy increased, black patients persistently through this five-year period were more likely to receive an axillary lymph node dissection by about 12 percentage points. And this translated to about a two to three year lag in the adoption of or increased adoption of sentinel lymph node biopsies in black patients. And several socioeconomic and geographic factors were associated with the lower use of sentinel lymph node biopsy, including having Medicaid, residents in an area with a lower median educational level or income, as well as residents in an area with a lower density of surgeons. This contributed overall to an increased risk and ultimately incidence of lymphedema. However, the study also uh, noted that even comparing the two surgical interventions to each other, black patients still had an increased incidence of lymphedema, um, and this is potentially related to uh, many things, including medical comorbidities such as obesity. 
And finally, there are also disparities in uh, surgical reconstruction. Black patients are less likely to receive reconstruction after their primary breast surgery as compared to white patients. And this meta-analysis examined factors of why, including prior to surgery, which include decreased amount of referrals for Black patients, lack of provider access, poor patient literacy, perioperative factors, including prevalence of medical comorbidities and treatment delays prior to reconstruction, as well as postoperative factors, such as increased um, uh, complications, such as fat necrosis, um, and some studies showing decreased levels of satis patient satisfaction and quality of life post-op, although many studies also found equivalent quality of life and patient satisfaction. One study even noted a decrease in patient satisfaction during the consultation process, which may be related to barriers in patient knowledge or difficulties with insurance co coverage and frustrations with that. And they also suggest some inter potential interventions, which you can see below in pink. Um, let's shift focus a little bit and talk briefly about uh, racial disparities in radiation therapy. So um, overall, Black patients are 18 to 24% less likely than their white patients to receive adjuvant radiation. Um, in some studies, this persisted even after adjusting for socioeconomic status. Um, black patients tend to have longer distances to travel and have to take public transportation to get to their radiation uh, site. And the type of hospital is a significant contributor to not receiving adjuvant RT. Hospitals with a high probability of treatment delay included smaller hospitals, lower breast cancer surgical volume, and rurally located. Um, this meta-analysis also included two very large population studies that found that these uh, radiation disparities, including treatment delays, actually contributed to ultimately to differences in mortality. Um, radiation therapy is uh, unique in that patients do require daily therapy for several weeks at a time. Many of the barriers that we know patients have can be compounded, uh, compounded in this setting, including um, longer distance to travel, having to take time off of work, and the financial burden of having to come to the hospital so frequently. Um, black patients with low socioeconomic status and more barriers of care have substantially prolonged treatment duration, especially when radiation was a part of their therapy. Let's uh, talk about medical management now. Um, so this is data from the Carolina Breast Cancer Study run out of UNC, which looked at delays in treatment initiation between white and black patients and found that a significantly higher portion of patients with had treatment initiation greater um, of black patients had a, a treatment initiation greater than 60 days from their day of diagnosis. This finding was recapitulated in patients with low income. And interestingly, they found that patients with private insurance had an increased likelihood of delayed treatment initiation. This is uh, data from UFC looking at our Chimec cohort, which we discussed last week, examining rates of past CR after completion of neoadjuvant chemotherapy. We find that overall and across all subtypes, white patients had an increased rate of achieving past CR. Similar to the findings from UNC, there was unfortunately a statistically significant difference in time to chemotherapy, in which in white patients was 31 days as compared to black patients was 45 days. And while treatment delays are certainly one contributing factor that might lead to these findings, there are also maybe biological disparities that are at play um, that require further investigation so we can bridge this gap. There are also differences in symptom burden in patients while they receive chemotherapy. On the left, we see that overall white women and black women reported similar degree of symptoms and general physical symptoms in the first row, which is measured prior to starting chemotherapy. That's kind of our baseline um, and despair. White patients reported increased symptoms of acute distress and black patients reported increased symptom burden of on treatment side effects. On the right, we can see a more detailed breakdown of these treatment-related adverse events, and Black patients are represented by the darker blue bar. And we can see for many patients, such as changes in weight, as well as change in appetite that are very important for us as providers, they have uh, increased symptoms as compared to white patients. And further understanding of toxicity difference across racial groups is very, very much needed. So certainly one way that we can better understand how Black patients respond to therapies is through clinical trial participation. And so let's look at some disparities there. This study uh, looked at cancer 
um, studies that resulted in FDA approvals from 2008 to 2018. This looked at a total of 232 trials and overall noted many disparities in participation. To start off, only two-thirds of these studies even reported race as a measure, um, while the remainder of studies didn't mention race in the paper at all. Solid tumor trials were more likely than heme trials to report race. Um, and I think these figures are the most telling. On the left, we see over the 10-year period the relative percentages of clinical trial participation across the four races um, and that are included in this data. And we can see, well, what white patients consistently are about 80%, and Asian patients are around 20%. Um, black patients and Hispanic patients are, you know, 10% or less um, across all, even up to 2018. On the right, we can see the incidence, mortality, and enrollment in a bar graph, while white patients are evenly and appropriately represented and Asian patients seemingly overrepresented. We see that Black patients and Hispanic patients are grossly underrepresented relative to both incidence and mortality. And the pivotal clinical trials showing improvement in um, progression-free survival, overall survival and quality of life for women um, with uh, metastatic HR positive breast cancer using CDK4-6 inhibitors and endocrine therapy had less than 3% of participants that were Black. The Olympiad study that resulted in the FDA approval um, of, of uh, Olaparib for patients with breast cancer had a very limited representation of Black patients um, with only 2.4% um, that are non-white uh, and non-Asian. So really, I think this is an area that um, we need to do better in. Um, I also wanted to discuss next generation sequencing, which is, you know, at this point currently standard of care for metastatic breast cancer. Um, this is a cohort of patients with either metastatic breast, colon, or lung cancer examining the effect of issuing a national coverage determination for NGS to facilitate testing in Medicare patients, and this was implemented in March 2018. We can see that prior to this utilization uh, uh, was similarly low across all racial groups. You can see that in the orange um, and across all insurance coverage as well. You can see that in the yellow boxes. However, after the national coverage determination was issued, we see that while all groups experienced an increase in testing, this was seen the least in Hispanic and Black patients racially and the least in Medicaid patients by insurance status. One reason for this disparity may be the slow uptake um, among Med Medicaid beneficiaries because Medicaid coverage is done by state while Medicare is a federal program. But even among uh, Medicare patients, the uh, racial disparity still persisted. Um, there are certainly additional treatment obstacles. You know, we don't have a robust drug response biomarkers and certainly none that kind of look at differences in racial disparities. Again, as we discussed, there's a low enrollment in African-Americans in clinical trials. And so we do have a poor understanding of if these patients have different responses and certainly differences in toxicities. There are many issues with access to high quality care and affordable health insurance. There can be a community mistrust in the healthcare system and healthcare providers. And there are also many taboos uh, related to sharing health history among family members, which can hampen our efforts to identify high risk patients and uh, give them appropriate treatment. I wanted to end this portion of the presentation with this slide as I think it demonstrates well many of the sources of treatment delay and treatment complexities and just providing breast cancer care. This is an analysis of time to adjuvant chemotherapy at NCI designated cancer centers. So even at high quality academic hospitals, there's a treatment delay in Hispanic and black patients as, uh, as compared to white patients. And this is mirrored in lower socioeconomic activities as well as patients who have non-private insurance. On the right, the bar graph showed the percentage of patients who initiated adjuvant chemotherapy greater than 120 days after their diagnosis. And unsurprisingly, the more complicated the pre-chemo course was, the more likely there was a treatment delay. Patients with um, the least delay just had one surgery when you add in multiple oncologic surgeries, reconstructive surgeries, and the use of oncotype. Over half of the patients who received all of these interventions um, started systemic therapy over four months after their diagnosis. And while on one hand, it can be disheartening to see these numbers, I'm personally encouraged by the how many points of intervention there are and how efficient multidisciplinary care can improve patient care, reduce treatment delays, and reduce uh, racial disparities. 
Um, I wanted to shift focus a little bit and talk somewhat about barriers to treatment, including uh, patient access and patient misconceptions. So what are some common misconceptions with patients in early breast cancer treatment? One is that early stage breast cancer rarely recurs, and we know that that's not necessarily the case. Number two, I think many patients believe that breast cancer is treated pretty much the same way. And three, um, when treatment is over, you're finished with breast cancer, and it's not something you ever have to think about again. Some common misconceptions with metastatic breast cancer. One is that you know, patients with metastatic breast cancer have a short amount of time left. And so what's the point of receiving treatment is that if you're diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer, that you did something wrong, either, you know, in your life or in your treatment when you had early stage breast cancer. Um, they think that metastatic breast cancer um, is one entity and will be treated the same way for every patient. And that metastatic breast cancer might require more aggressive therapy than early stage breast cancer. Um, and that, you know, that uh, if early stage breast cancer is going to recur, it will happen within five years, which we know for some subtypes is the case, but certainly not for uh, hormone receptor positive breast cancer. And then I think there are many misconceptions with clinical trials. Number one, meaning that receiving a placebo means that you're getting even less in the standard of care and that you might just not be receiving any treatment of all, at all for your breast cancer. Um, number two is that signing a conformed consent is kind of a binding agreement and removes the possibility of re re future refusal. And third, that the choice of experimental agent depends entirely upon the oncologist's preference. And lastly, they think that either the clinician or the hospital is benefiting from the patient's enrollment into clinical trial, and that there's a financial incentive for us providing uh, cl uh, clinical care trial to patients. What are some things that we can do to overcome some racial disparities in uh, breast cancer? So certainly things that we can um, encourage our patients to do is behavioral modifications. So better diet, better sleep, exercise, regular visits to the primary care doctor and having a strong relationship with, with them. Um, encouraging, you know, maybe breast exams and certainly getting uh, regular mammogram screening and then um, encouraging them to share and discuss the family history with the clinician. Um, things that we as a clinician can do, we can certainly try to reduce bias in our communication and interactions with minorities. We can try to Im improve patients' experience and trust in the medical system. We can encourage participation of minorities in clinical trials. We can try to explain treatment options better and clearly to patients and certainly uh, with special emphasis on patients with lower health literacy. Um, we can try to dispel patient uh, myths and perceptions regarding the treatment process, and we can proactively try to individually assess and recommend steps to address patients' risk factors.